If I conferred with our furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could talk to me. Hello and welcome to Pet Watch, a monthly program about the Williamson County Animal Center. My name is Debbie Sims, and I'll be your host today. And my special guest today is Pam Johnson Bennett. Hi, Pam. Hi, Debbie. People may recognize Pam as uh, one of the leading cat behavior experts in, well, I was going to say the United States, but you're all over the world now. I spread out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, in, in the UK, you had an Animal Planet uh, UK version show called Psycho Kitty. So right. let's get that out there right away. <laughs> well, how did you get the name Psycho Kitty, and what was the series about? Well, most of the people who have cat behavior problems would call me up and say, my cat is psycho. So <laughs> it seemed like a name everybody would relate to. Right. So, and it's funny and it's catchy. Yeah. So did you actually um, deal with people's individual problems? Yeah, I, I did house calls, uh, and we would show that on the air. And, and it's really, it's never about the cat. <laughs> I've heard of that. I've it's heard never that the cat. Right, it's right. always just... Us. It's and knowing so, what to do mm -hmm. to assimilate the cat or to work on the problem. And to stop viewing the cat as bad. That's the biggest thing. That's mm -hmm. the biggest hurdle is the cat is not deliberately being bad. Well, our other guest today is Penny Adams, who uh, works at the shelter, and, and she's kind of my on-site um, <laughs> kitty and cat, all things kitty and cat uh, related, and uh, she's a cat adoption specialist, really. Um, and a jack of all trades doing other things, but she's got two little foster kittens today, and I wanted to make a plea, Penny. How old are these uh, kittens, and who are they being cared for uh, by? Well, these guys are about, oh, let's say about five weeks old. They are being cared for by uh, one of our vet techs, um, and she's bottle feeding them. She's uh, taking good care of these guys till they're up for adoption in a few weeks. And usually they're at least eight weeks before we can consider them? That's correct. Okay. They're, they're typically uh, around two pounds when they go on the adoption floor. At that point, they're available to Williamson County residents only mm -hmm. until uh, they can be spayed or neutered, about three pounds, and then they're available to out-of-county residents. And Penny has on a unique sweatshirt today. Um, tell this, me what it's called. <laughs> this is a Mew Guru. Mew, like it, kittens Mew. They're yes, really? right. Mew Guru. Guru. Oops, and you stuff me. them in your pouch like yep. a kangaroo. These guys are being a little, a little active. Uh, they weren't seeing in the in the well, pouch so well. Well, not everybody has a mew guru. I want you to know that. And I, not everybody has seen one before, so it's a first on our show. <laughs> and she's even got built-in toys there. Um, yes. With the with her with the string at the top. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm working in the office, I can put kittens uh, to help socialize them mm -hmm. um, in my shirt uh, while I'm and still have two hands free to work on my computer. <laughs> now, Pam, how did you get started in the, being an expert on cats? I mean, it, you've written it wasn't 10 my plan. books. It wasn't your plan. <laughs> wasn't. We have some of your books here. Um, how did it start? I started out as a cat owner who did everything wrong everything wrong because years ago like when I started out in the Flintstone years uh, there wasn't a lot of information about cats and there was no information on cat behavior and so I had two cats and nobody wanted to come to my house no one they were awful mm -hmm. and I took them to the veterinarian for their vaccinations and the vet said put them to sleep now this was years ago and it was a shocking thing for me. They thought sure, that you sure. know, not only would I not put them to sleep because they weren't behaving well, but if they weren't behaving well, I must have been responsible. So I set out to really just fix my own problem and became more of a watcher of cats and learning what I could. Mm -hmm. And I solved their problems and realized their problem was me. Uh -huh. And when I brought them back to the vet the following year for vaccinations, he didn't even believe they were the same cats. So he started, he asked me if I would work with some of his clients, and then wow. other vets started asking yeah. if I would work. And that's how an accidental career began. And, <laughs> and in the beginning, now I started about 37 years ago, you didn't, 
you didn't say with pride that you were a cat behavior specialist because right. people would think, you know, you're, you're crazy. Yeah. You know, so it wasn't a career I went into for money or fame. Mm -hmm. And you had to be really strong inside to be able to do it. <laughs> but I've stuck yeah. with it. And so uh, far, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, and there's that whole negative connotation, cat lady. That, that, yeah. Right, and that's a common question I get, right. you know, with, when they find out that I work with cats. It's, well, how many cats do you have? Thinking I have, you know, 40 or 50 cats. I have one. Uh huh. But you learn to think like a cat, which was the title of one of your books. And um, it's really my philosophy. Mm -hmm. If you look at the world from the cat's point of view and stop looking at it as the cat is deliberately doing something wrong, uh -huh. then you become a better problem solver. And that's really the key to it. It's kind of like a child. <laughs> Usually they're acting out because of a reason. Right. And it's There's up to the parent to figure it. out what it is. So what what do cats think? When you, when I look at a cat, what are they thinking? How are, what's their basic instinct? Well, their first thing is survival and safety. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we just intrude upon them. You know, we we see a cat and we want to go pick it up. We have this dog mentality yeah. that, you know, because we can call the dog to us that the cat's going to want to be right with us. So if you give the cat space and let him set the pace of the interaction, mm -hmm. then you build trust. So you talk a little bit about how important it is to play with a cat. But you've got to play the games that the cat wants to play, not the ones you want. Right, and you have to play the way a cat would want to play. I see owners make mistakes where they take that fishing pole toy and they're dangling it right in the cat's face. And that's annoying. That's not the way cats hunt. The mouse doesn't come up to the cat and go, okay, lunchtime. You know, <laughs> Here so I am. <laughs> you're not helping the cat to engage his mental ability. Mm -hmm. Playtime is not just physical activity. We're not going for this aerobic exercise. We're right. going for a combination of physical and mental. Well, then what's, what's a good way to play with a cat? Give you us some have, tips. You have to move the toy as if it's prey so that the cat can use his brain. Cats are ambush predators. They either kind of go very stealthily through the grass until they hear something or see something, or they wait in one place until something comes along, and then they pounce. They don't have the lung capacity to go racing through, you know, five miles to chase uh, mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. So if you play like that, where the toy is coming out, it's moving, and then it hides, and then you make a little sound, let the cat inch closer and use his brain. And that's where there's a benefit. There's a release of the good brain chemicals, and the cat is satisfied. Mm -hmm. And a cat that's satisfied and gets the right kind of play, does it behave better automatically? It, in it will behave better because cats have a job to do. They're hunters. And we bring them in the house, which is where I think they should be, indoors and safe, but we don't give them anything to do. So because they are hunters and they, they do seek stimulation, mm -hmm. they start finding it on their own. And it might be scratching the furniture, unrolling the toilet paper, you know, biting your ankles, attacking a companion mm -hmm. cat. Mm -hmm. So put out the playtime on a regular basis, set it up so that you're doing it maybe two or three times a day, but also set up the environment so the cat has things to do. And when you're not there to engage your cat, what do they do when they're alone? What, what types of toys do they need, like scratching posts? Uh, scratching posts, cat trees. You know, cats love elevation. They feel safer there. And in a multi-cat household, that's a great way to help keep the peace. And set out toys in a way that cats can discover them. Don't just have them in a basket in the corner. You know, use puzzle feeders, and you can fill them with either dry food or wet food, and mm -hmm. you scatter them throughout the house. Before I leave in the morning, I take some fuzzy mice, and I stick them in places where just their tails are sticking out so that when my cat goes yeah. by, she sees them. Mm -hmm. Just set it up so that the cat has something to do during the day. Because otherwise, it might get... Cats bored. can bored, bored. They can get yeah. depressed. Get in the trash, get in the toilet paper, and then you come home and you get mad because they did something. Right. That is very simple. They're, if you're going to let them roam the house, they need a jungle to play in. <laughs> and they have amazing senses. You know, cats, you don't have all of these incredible senses and not be an amazing hunter. Mm -hmm. So imagine we keep the cat in the house and it's all wasted. Mm -hmm. So let the cat engage and enjoy that. You, your cat will feel more satisfied. He'll be a better behaved cat. Mm -hmm. And he'll enjoy you more. And, and Penny, what about kittens like that? What, what a, does that kitten need? Obviously, these two don't have the, the mother cat. 
Well, in their case, and they're being nurtured by a human. I was going to say to segue on what she said, we try to recommend uh, when folks are looking to adopt a kitten to adopt a pair. You talk about the benefits of a pair versus a single. Right. Cats learn from each other. Okay. They become company, company for each other. Uh, you can help battle separation anxiety. So, it, And also they'll play with each other and learn how hard to bite. You know, the other cat will teach the, the one cat that, oh, no, you bit too hard. Mm -hmm. So that's how you avoid having cats who end up biting us or don't know how to play well or socialize well because they didn't learn. That's why it's so important, if possible, to have kittens remain with their litter mates as long as possible. You know, we did a lot of that last year during kitten season. We, we actually said, please adopt two. Um, mm -hmm. We had a lot of sponsored adoptions, and we didn't charge any extra for the second kitten. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, a, it was beneficial to us because more kittens got adopted more quickly. Right. And it's but, not that much more expensive. You no. know, you have the initial expenses in the beginning, but it's not that much more expensive to have two over one. And then um, if people are considering a kitten, if they happen to have an older cat, what are your thoughts on that versus, like if somebody has, let's say, a cat that's six, seven, eight years old. What, it's what? matching, to me, it's matching personalities. Uh -huh. Making sure, you know, if you have a cat who is always in your lap and that's all he wants to do, adopt a second cat or a kitten who's a little more playful and doesn't, so that they're not competing. Uh -huh. uh, if you have a geriatric cat, I would not adopt a kitten because some people will do that because they think that'll kind of charge up oh, yeah. the, the you'll feel older more cat. Youthful. But what you'll, you'll do is cause more stress, and the one so. thing that older cat does not need is stress. So mm -hmm. try not to go to the opposite ends of the scales. Uh, and keep in mind when you adopt a kitten and you have an adult cat, that adult cat already has a sense of territory established, whereas a kitten basically thinks, everybody's my friend, right? Yes. And so I'll just go right up. They haven't, they mm -hmm. haven't learned that territory yet. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind, too. So it's matching personalities. Um, and may I just mention, this is one stressed out cat right now. <laughs> You're being facetious, I think. <laughs> one totally napping, the other one totally inquisitive. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing uh, you can see in a free-roaming cat room like we have at our shelter, is you can see the cats interact with other cats, other people. And when you're in there for a while, you, you can sit down and let a cat come to you and get a feel for, for the person. And we do a lot of education at our shelter. You've been in our free-roaming cat room. And sometimes people who don't understand cats are coming there and they're just reaching up under the cabinet to get a cat that's trying to hide. That's a big mistake. I mean, people need to have a basic knowledge of what they are adopting. It, it does come down to let the cat set the pace. Mm -hmm. It really, if you just are patient and let the cat come to you, the cat learns to trust you and you're golden then. If mm -hmm. you are approaching the cat and not giving the cat a chance to feel safe or comfortable, mm -hmm. then you have a harder, a much harder road. And we're not a patient. No, we're not. We're not patient at all. Uh -huh. So a lot of times it's that we're just trying too hard. And if you just are patient, it's going to pay off tremendously. I've never had a cat. And, and I would, now that I've studied a little bit about your work, I would read a book before I'd get a cat. Because it is, a, it is work. You do have to engage your pet like you do a dog and take the dog for a walk. Well, what are you going to do for the cat? Right. Let's think that through. And we don't think about no. training a cat. We think about training a dog, but right. people think cats aren't trainable. And if you get in there early, especially with a kitten, you know, the basics of the cat being able to be handled, to go in a carrier, to be able mm -hmm. to manipulate the paws so that later you can trim nails, all of that stuff, if you do that with a kitten, will make life so much easier when this cat is three years old. That's and exactly where I was going. You can train a cat. I've been reading up some of your, some of your work and watched a couple of your videos, and I think that's many people are not even aware of that. How do you... You, may, you train it by modifying its behavior. And with dogs, you just take a handful of kibble, and every time they sit, you give them you a kibble. You can do that with cats, Is too. It, cats? How do you, yeah, how do you train cats? What are some of the tactics you can use? You food, They're food motivated. Okay. So you use a treat. You find something. I use dehydrated chicken, just small bits of it. Mm -hmm. um, if your cat is on a special diet, use a portion of that diet. To me, I, t I look at how much I feed my cat, and I take a portion of it out to use for training. Okay. And I still train my cat now, and she's nine years old. So just all kinds of things, training to accept being in a carrier, 
you know, those are things you don't think about with that cute little kitten because mm -hmm. it's easy to get the kitten in a carrier. Yeah. But when, you're, when your cat is hiding under the bed and he's four years old and it's time to go to the veterinarian, what you do don't want to end up a, what you know, do? with bloody right. stumps. You yeah. know? And you can get um, scratched or bitten by your own cat. It's quite common. Right. So you yeah. make things positive. You, know, you leave the carrier out with the door open and you put treats in there. You feed the cat in there mm -hmm. and you slowly get him in to you know, where you close the door, you walk around the room, yeah. put the cat back down, mm -hmm. go outside in the car. You just do each step very gradually. Mm -hmm. You don't go from shoving the cat in the carrier and going all the way to the vet. Right. If you give the cat a chance to adjust to each step, it will go much better. Wow. And it's all psychology, it sounds like. It's common <laughs> Instinct. sense. Instinct. It's common sense. Yeah, it's common sense. <laughs> it's like you don't grab up, you know, a baby. If it needs to be comforted, you comfort it. You don't just stick it in the carrier. I mean, we've all had moments where we've had to <laughs> when they didn't want to go somewhere, <laughs> right? But a baby can't scratch you and, and bite you like a cat can. Um, what do you advise people? What are some of the common mistakes? You talked about biting. You know, when we play with puppies, we let them chew on our hands. What happens if you do that with a kitten? Well, with the kitten, it's not going to hurt so much, but what you're teaching the kitten is yeah. that it's okay to bite, bite flesh. So when that cat is now three or four years old and doesn't want to be mm -hmm. picked up, he now thinks, oh, well, I'll just bite you. Mm -hmm. So do Keep, not, don't set the cat up to fail. It's right. very easy to use your fingers, they're instant toys, right. you know, to wiggle even under the covers of the bed, you know, so the cat will attack it. But just keep in mind what you're setting that cat up for. Mm -hmm. You know, you may like it when your hands are under the covers, but, you know, at two o'clock in the morning when you're sleeping Chomp. and you move yeah. <laughs> and the cat goes after you, you're not going to like it. Uh, and also, cat, I read that you had uh, noted that cats don't like to wrestle or be held down or the way that we do our dogs we get on right. the floor but they and, don't they know. don't that's not how they play yeah. they don't they don't wrestle um, try not to pet the cat's stomach that's usually going to be a, a bad result for you mm -hmm. um, and also with talking about restraint and handling a lot of times we think we've got to really do this death grip on a cat to do something. Mm -hmm. And the message you send to the cat is, oh my gosh, this is the end of the world. What is she going to do to me? Right. So less is more. Teach your cat to enjoy, or at least tolerate, maybe not enjoy, <laughs> uh, nail trims or ear cleaning or teeth cleaning. Mm -hmm. Make it fast. Have it be over before the cat has a chance to really think about it. Make it positive. Give him a treat at the end. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to hold him down in this death grip. Yeah. And most cats... Most cat owners do trim their own cat's nails. Do they learn that? I know Penny's great at it. She, she. It's easy to do. Mm -hmm. it, again, if you have a kitten, that's the time to start. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know how to do it, ask your veterinarian, uh, either the, show the, you the or technician or the mm -hmm. veterinarian will show you the proper way to do it. Mm -hmm. And don't try to get all the nails done at once. You know, just do a couple, and ah. if the cat gets restless, you come back and do some more later. Again, it's always leaving things on a positive note, and mm -hmm. that way the cat will feel next time, yeah, it wasn't so bad, I can tell. Just because this. we want all the toes trimmed does not mean it's going to happen that day. Right. And, we and if, can't you, impose and if that. you insist on it, right. then the next time you get the clippers out, the cat's going to think, oh, that was awful. I'm going to hide under the bed. Yeah. As opposed to two or three nails done in the morning and maybe another two in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And it'll work out much better for you. You talked about playing with the cat and, and having little uh, jingle bell type toys that roll up and let the cat get it and, or um, hiding a mouse in the house. And how important is it to let the cat succeed? Right. That's why I don't like laser toys. The laser Tell me light about toys. That. Because the cat never gets anything. Cats are tactile. So the laser toy is for us. We can just sit there and play. And, and we think it's funny. And the cat is just bouncing off the wall, sides right. heaving, panting like crazy. But when he puts his paw on it, he doesn't have anything. So let's have this be a satisfying experience. Mm -hmm. Let him have something he can get in his mouth or in his paws. So that's mm -hmm. why I always like actual toys. Mm -hmm. And if you say that your cat doesn't play, my answer is you just haven't found the right toy or you're just not using the right technique. Mm -hmm. Cats can have preferences. Preferences in mouthfeel. Do they want something with feathers? Do they want something soft, something hard? So sometimes you have to do some it testing. It makes a noise. Cats respond some to may noise. Like, uh -huh. Some may like that. Some may not. If you have a very timid cat, you know, maybe just a, a string that you're holding and that you put away after, after playtime. But just mm -hmm. figure out what your cat's personality is. 
What about the old ball of yarn idea or the ball of string? That's a no-no nowadays. That's a, yeah. What, what's string, the problem there? String, ribbon, because cats have backward-facing barbs on their tongue, and that's how they clean their coat. That's how they rasp the meat from bones of their hunters. Uh, but the problem with that is anything that goes on their tongue has only one direction to go, and that's down. Mm. So the cat can easily choke. So if you are playing with your cat with a ribbon or a string, you are holding it and you monitor it mm -hmm. and make sure you have completely put that away so that the cat can't have it. I don't think you should have any interactive toys out at all when you're not playing with them. And those are either fishing pole toys because mm -hmm. the cat can get mm -hmm. caught up in it. That's like a little, like a wand, a short wand, wand with a, with a string and a thing. toy on the yeah. end. And Those are things that are not safe unless you're using them with the mm -hmm. cat. Plus, you want to keep them special. Mm -hmm. That interactive time is special. Mm -hmm. So there are the toys the cat can have for solo time that are safe, and there, there are the toys that you reserve for your special time together. You talked about a puzzle toy. That's a new thing. A fairly new thing. It's hiding food right. in a plastic platter kind of device. Well, you can. There are ones you can buy. Mm -hmm. There's all different kinds, mm -hmm. or you can just make something simple. Oh. A water bottle mm -hmm. that you poke holes in. The holes have to be larger than the kibble because otherwise that's really frustrating. <laughs> and you put some dry food in there. Put the cap on, and the cat gets to roll it around and gets the food reward, which is what cats. That's natural for them. Mm -hmm. They are hunters. They work for food. Mm -hmm. And then if your cat, like my cat, is extremely good at it, so I had to put fewer holes so that she had to work a little uh -huh. bit harder. But she learned that as an adult cat. She learned that as an adult cat, uh -huh. and, and it was natural for her. She just walked by because they're curious. Mm -hmm. She saw the bottle on the floor, walked by, touched it, kibble came out. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is great. Do all cats end up responding to their human companions verbally or the way dogs do, like, hey, I'm home, and they run through the house. Do cats do that too? Or? If you make it a positive experience, I feel that everyone should teach the cat to respond to their name mm -hmm. because you want to be able to know where your cats are. So make it a positive experience. Don't ever call the cat's name in anger. Don't ever call the cat to you to punish him. Mm -hmm. So if you call the cat to you, and you're doing something positive, feeding, giving a treat, petting, mm -hmm. then the cat learns to respond to. Penny, do your name. cats know their names? Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and by the way, uh, I know Pam's a big advocate of not using a water bottle for, or oh, water no, sp no, uh, no. sprayer for Never. correction. Oh, for discipline. So there are theories with in the dog world that you get a little spray bottle of water, and if the dog's behavior is not what you want, you squirt them. In the face, but again, it or... comes down to thinking like a cat. Yeah. The cat jumps on the kitchen counter. We don't want the cat on the counter. A lot of people will spray water at the cat. Mm -hmm. Well, my approach is figure out why the cat wants the counter so that you can give him an alternative. Is he jumping on the counter because he wants to be near you? Mm -hmm. And if, if that's the case, it means then you need to give attention before you start working on dinner. Is he jumping on the counter because that's where the food smells are? Well. Don't keep food out and open on the counter, and maybe when you're preparing food, that's the time to put a puzzle feeder out so he has something else to do. Mm -hmm. Or is he jumping on the counter because that's the window that overlooks the bird feeder? Then maybe you need to set up a cat tree oh. near a window. So rather than punish the cat, mm -hmm. and we do that with furniture scratching too, a lot of people will punish the cat for scratching the furniture. A cat has a natural need to do certain things, mm -hmm. and you can't punish that out of them. What you should do instead is figure out an alternative that's acceptable to you that meets the cat's needs. Wow, that's amazing. I we update, we have a second one asleep Oh, we now. have another one sleeping now, so we know what, kit we know what kittens want. <laughs> um, and speaking of kittens, I, some of the questions that I, I saw in some of your books is uh, when a person's thinking about adopting a cat or a kitten, there are things they should consider. They need interactive toys, like a cat scratcher. They need get what the else? supplies. What get else the is a necessity? Get the supplies, the right type of scratching post. Don't just go to your local discount store and go for the cheapest thing. That's where, and I know I'm partial because I'm an author, but learn what cats really need so mm -hmm. that you're making a wise investment so that you don't have to buy one scratching post, realize it's a piece of junk, and then you have to go and buy a better one. But I think before you adopt a cat or a kitten, the most important thing is to look at your home environment and make sure that's the right environment for that cat. Wow. 
we could talk all day, but I, I want to get in that you're going to be our special guest at an event we're having at the shelter on May the 5th. We're calling it Cinco de Miao. Uh, it's a takeoff on Cinco de Mayo, and it's going to be on Saturday, May 5th at the shelter. And Pam will be there with doing some mini lectures on different cat topics. It is a free family event. We encourage you to come out. We'll have um, vendors like the cat shop and a, maybe a veterinarian there to ask uh, health questions. We'll have some cat uh, toys that you can actually make for the cats at our shelter. It's just a celebration of all things feline, and it's going to be a fun afternoon. It's after the shelter closes from 3.30 to 5, but we're going to keep cat adoption open. Dave, it's 3.30 uh, Penny, to 6. I'm sorry, 3.30 to 6, <laughs> Penny. You're right. I'm glad you're here. Uh, we encourage you to come out with the kids, make up some cat toys, meet Pam. Um, you can look at uh, the topics in her book. Her newest one, Cat Wise, is just full of typical questions that you ask about kittens and cats, and she has very logical, concise uh, advice for all the problems that you might encounter from hissing to uh, litter box problems. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, Cinco de Miao on May the 5th. It's a Saturday afternoon at the shelter at 106 Claudia Yates Drive. Uh, there will be a lot of kittens by then for you to look at, and hopefully you can take a pair of them home so they can play together. I also want to mention that our community rabies clinics will be taking place during the month of April, and they will be out at um, April 7th. These are all on Saturdays uh, from 1 to 3. Saturday, April 7th at College Grove Elementary, Westwood Elementary, and Bethesda Delian Market. And then on Saturday, April 14th, Centennial High School, Page Middle, and Hillsboro Middle. And then on Saturday, April 21st, Nolensville Elementary, Longview Elementary, Brentwood Middle and Independence High School. And then of course, the last Saturday of every month, we are at the shelter doing uh, rabies shots and microchips. All that information is also on our website, adoptwcac.org. We wanna take one last look at our kittens for today. And thank you very much, Pam. And we hope a lot of people come out to meet you. Uh, you really are meeting one of the most premier cat behaviorists uh, in the world. She travels around, and she might even be able to tell us about the cat cafes that she's been to. I haven't had time to touch on that today. Got to get one. That's a new phenomenon <laughs> in Canada, as I understand. So she's traveling around Canada going to cat cafes. So that should be an interesting uh, thing to ask her about if you come out May the 5th. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Pet Watch and that you'll come by our shelter and consider always to adopt and not shop. If I conferred with the furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could talk to me. Sanctuary by David M. Harris. Not enough of us in that neighborhood to make teams, but we had two patches of woods straddling the road that led maybe a quarter mile from our corner to the drive-in. Only a few acres, but enough for a world of exploration. Unlike our own neat yards with careful trees and well-tended aromatic roses, no one tended the woods. If my father wanted firewood, I could lead him to the windfalls. Otherwise, none of the adults ventured into our woods. Mostly the place was abandoned, except for me and maybe another kid, never more than three of us, poking around in the familiar wild. The boggy smells, some fallen trees, wild blackberry canes, and the remains of old kid projects that might have been meant as forts or clubhouses but forgotten by some earlier generation of explorers or by us. Cars whizzing by on the raised highway on the edge of what we could choose not to hear. Now the road passes a sports complex on the way to extended parking for the shopping mall. Our woods have vanished from the parkway to where the drive-in was, familiar to memory and imagination respite from the neat imagined lives of our parents. Mm -hmm.